Aloha, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in to another week of Trauma Recovery University. I'm your host, Athena Moberg, and your amazing co-host, Bobby Parrish, is here with me as well. I want to say a very special welcome to all of you who show up early and just support one another in your recovery journeys um, here at Trauma Recovery University. This is one of three Twitter chats that we have every single week. This one has a live Q&A video component to it, so if you are here on YouTube, awesome. If you're on our Roku TV channel, welcome. If you're here on Google, we are happy that you're here. If you are listening on a podcast platform such as iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, SoundCloud, or even iHeartRadio, we want to kindly remind you that this is a video broadcast. We would love to welcome you over to invite or to welcome you over and invite you to come and join all of us. Bobby, I have a new number for the number of countries we're in. I'm going to surprise you right now. So Trauma okay. Recovery University is, we are a global support group that meet up on Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook, and we are in over 70 countries, and we're humbled by that. So I know, wow. right? <laughs> so welcome to all of you. Uh, we are currently in the process of transitioning. Um, and getting all of our resources translated into other languages for all of you that do not speak English as your native tongue. So I want to invite anyone listening on a podcast platform to go head on over to nomoreshameproject.com or traumarecoveryuniversity.com and um, just go ahead and watch some videos. And if you would like access to our complimentary one-page resource, which is downloadable and it's a PDF, so it will be... Um, accessible and readable on any mobile device or any computer anywhere or any tablet. Um, and you can get that by clicking on the downloadables tab on one of our websites, traumarecoveryuniversity.com or nomoreshameproject.com. And that's just free. We just want to say thank you. It's sort of our weekly blog post, if you will. And it is a one page resource that sort of encompasses everything that we will be discussing tonight here on Trauma Recovery University. Every week we show up here, we do a live Q&A with Twitter, with you. You tweet your questions to us, you tag us, Athena Moberg, Bobby L. Parrish, and you use the hashtag no more shame. We answer your questions, and every week we have a different topic. That's sort of how this all works. This week's topic is one of my favorites of all time over the couple years that we've been doing this, and it is music and expressive therapies to aid our recovery journey. So music and expressive therapies are different in that they're not, they don't follow the same guidelines as talk therapy. Talk therapy is so powerful and there are tons of modalities out there. There's neuro-linguistic programming, cognitive behavioral therapy, dialectical behavioral therapy. There are so many different talk therapies out there and different modalities that include speaking, using our voice, and it's so, 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 so healing. There are, however, ways that we can express ourselves in art or listening to music or, or playing music or dance or even having a pet or um, like, a, like a, a dog that is trained to be a PTSD service dog or even equine therapy, which my girlfriend Julie is actively involved in. She lives in Washington. So all of this we're going to be unpacking and talking about tonight, and it's all pertaining to you, the adult survivor of child abuse, specifically childhood sexual abuse. Bobby and myself are both survivors of childhood sexual abuse, and we show up here every single week and we share our recovery journey with you because that's what we've chosen to do. And over the course of the last couple of years, we've invited several hundred, even probably a thousand people, close to a thousand people, to join us in healing and safe community, whether that's in the YouTube comments on the videos, watching a Roku TV channel, coming into a private secret Facebook support group to heal among other survivors, free from predators, zero tolerance policy, no abuse, no minimization allowed, just you and other people healing. So that's who we are, that's what we're about, and it is my privilege and my honor to show up here every single week to support you, the survivor, and just share humor and tools and education and resources and some laughs 
um, along the way because if you can't laugh, then oh my goodness gracious, we've been through so much, we need to find a way to laugh. So we show up here every single week and you are the reason we show up. We are honored and privileged to be here on your recovery journey with you. Thank you for being here. I'm gonna turn this over to my amazing partner, Bobby Parrish, who is, I'm sure, feverishly and amazingly tweeting every single person that is out there here to support. So I'll take the Twitter stream over for you if you'd like, Bobby. And yes. Bobby will share all kinds of really fun, amazing announcements with you right now. Take it away, Bobby. Hi, everybody. I am so glad that you're here. We are just honored that you choose to spend an hour or a little more than an hour of your week with us. Um, or if you're sitting home binge watching these episodes or listening on a podcast, however you are, we are honored that you're here. Um, I want to issue first and foremost a big old trigger warning because this is a video podcast, live broadcast that discusses childhood abuse. And so please use excellent self-care. Take care of yourself. Um, if you get triggered, just step away. It's no big deal. The broadcast will be here um, as podcasts, as videos up on YouTube within a matter of a couple of hours, and you'll be able to come back to them. So don't hesitate to just walk away. We don't want you to watch when you're feeling distressed at all. Um, if you are in crisis right now or you need help urgently and you're in the U.S. or Canada, we encourage you to reach out to our friends at RAIN. RAIN is the Rape, Abuse, Incest National Network, and it is available at 1-800-656-HOPE, H-O-P-E. You can also reach out to them on their website. Um, they have a crisis chat feature, and that is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And their website is rain.org, R-A-I-N-N dot O-R-G. You can watch my eyes here as I think. <laughs> um, if you are in the UK, you can reach out to the Samaritans. The Samaritans are available at 116-123. They also have support via email. And you can email them at joe, J-O, at survivors, survivors. Where did that come from? Samaritans.org. So Joe at Samaritans.org. You can also get support from the Samaritans via text, and that number is 0775-909090. If you are in Australia, which is our next largest growing community of survivors, your national hotline number is 131114. And yay that we're in 70 countries now. And um, as we get larger groups of people in different countries, we will give you the crisis and hotline numbers for those countries as well. Um, if you know any, feel free to tweet them to us or however it is you want to get them to us so we can share them with um, survivors from around the world. So, Athena um, I, and I have been, yeah. I just wanted to say a very special shout out to Tiffany and Mia. Tiffany is joining us for the very first time, and, and I'm noticing that Mia is joining us as well. Mia lives with Matt, and she is a feline. But Tiffany mm. is human. Tiffany is human, and I would like to say a very special welcome to Tiffany Jenkins because it's her very first time on Twitter and her very first time joining us live. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Please continue. <laughs> Hi, Tiffany. Um, I saw a picture of Matt's cat, Mia. She is gorgeous. Um, Athena and I have been very hard at work on uh, a special project that we are going to announce sometime here in the next, hopefully, two weeks. So we want you to, I used to teach kindergarten, and so I would tell my students to put on their listening ears. Um, so put on your Twitter and Facebook listening ears over the next couple of weeks because we have a phenomenal announcement. You know, Athena and I, I think we've shared this with you before. When we started this, oh gosh, I think I counted the other day, 20 months ago, um, we had grand visions. And we had both had such difficult recoveries, just 
gut-wrenching hard recovery because there were so few resources for survivors, so little education out there um, for survivors about what trauma is and how it affects us, and so little support. You know, here's a therapy appointment maybe every two weeks and, you know, just off on your own and, you know, get better. Um, it took us a long time and it was so hard. And so we, we came together in an effort to put together something that would make other people's journeys easier. And we had grand visions. And we just kept telling ourselves as things got hard and, um, you know, the few times that we thought, why are we doing this? Why do we keep doing this? You know, that we are just um, two girls with laptops sitting in our living rooms trying to change the world. And we we finally really, really, really get in there. And so this announcement that we're going to make is going to going to be amazing and um, it is really a next step in us changing the world for survivors everywhere so that you have education you have knowledge you have support at your fingertips 24 7 uh, 365 so um, stay tuned and be on the watch and as soon as we can make our announcement we will be making the announcement on Twitter and Facebook and if you live within about 500 miles of either one of us, you may very well hear us screaming it from our living rooms or yes. with our laptops. <laughs> yes, I have people who will likely hear me over on the island of Oahu, even though I live on Maui. So uh, I'm so excited to just be on this journey with all of you guys. Bobby and I, like she was just saying, are just, we're beyond thrilled to be here with you. And we're not here ever saying we have it all figured out and you guys are broken <laughs> and I know that that sounds like I'm saying it in jest but a lot of places you go online regardless of what it is you're looking for the guru and the expert and everything you know, they have it all figured out and you're the one that screwed up and coming into a place like this with us where we're all on a very, very, very painful recovery journey. We're not talking about like, we're not here to tell you about the next best widget or plugin or book or, um, or I don't know, I'm trying to think of stuff that people sell online or whatever, <laughs> but we're here to just show up and support you. And it's an honor and it's a privilege. And we're just so stoked that we get to do life with you guys. And that's what we do. We're showing up here doing life with you guys and we're blessed. We're just, we count ourselves blessed and fortunate to be here with you guys. Bobby, could you possibly have imagined when we, like you were talking about a minute ago, when we first started, we had all these visions of grandeur with, on our laptops in our living rooms trying to change the world. Could you have ever imagined that we would reach 70 countries? Like, no. I, I don't think that I dared to dream that big. In fact, I have an issue with like dream. I always wonder like, am I dreaming too big? I helped my girlfriend, you guys have heard me tell you this before, but I helped my girlfriend Victoria start a cinnamon roll business. And we were training for a marathon together. She was my marathon buddy and I helped her start a cinnamon roll business. And it was just sort of like this like symbiotic relationship. It was cool. But she asked me to dream really, really, really big. And, and um, if I could have anything with her business launching and I could like maybe become like business partners or do something with her someday or whatever, what would my big dream be? And my dream was to have a gym membership. Wow. <laughs> that, that was my big dream. I wanted a gym membership because I, it had been a really long time since I'd had a gym membership and I didn't make enough money for a long, long time to have my own gym membership. And so I wanted a gym membership. And that was my big, big dream. And she was like, looking at me. Are you kidding? Are you joking? She thought I was joking and I wasn't. You guys, survivors have a hard time seeing 
the forest through the trees. Like we can't see the big expansive world out there of what we could possibly accomplish, what we were purposed for, what we were created to be, the goals we have, the dreams we have. We can't even see past, oh my gosh, I hope I don't have another panic attack today. Oh my gosh, my PTSD is flaring up so bad. Okay, my anxiety is off the charts right now and I have to go to the market and I have to buy food and oh my gosh, I have to go to the bank and I can't stand going to the bank and then I have to go to the post office and I hate the post office and oh my gosh, this is just crazy and there aren't even words to describe all of the things that are going through our heads, which is a perfect segue to tonight's topic, which is sometimes just getting messy with some art or listening to some music super duper loud or getting a musical instrument and trying it for the first time and like doing the little demo keys that they have and all this stuff like just just somehow expressing yourself in a way immersing yourself in something that doesn't require words it is yes. therapeutic it is life changing yes. and it is often life saving so um, buckle your seatbelts because this is going to be a really, really, really fun one. If you are not here live and you're not hanging out with us, tweeting and asking questions and you're like, good Lord, girls, just shut up and get to the point, then down below here, right above the comment section in the bottom of the description section on the replay in 24 hours or so, you will see a link that says if you're here for the replay and you weren't here live and you don't want to hear us talk, Click on the number and it will fast forward you just to our downloadable one page resource content that we do on a screen share so you don't have to listen to us talk. Just an enhancement for you folks that are not here live. So um, again, you can get access to that complimentary one page downloadable resource over at traumarecoveryuniversity.com. Click on downloadables and it'll ask you for your email address, send you access, boom, you're in. And you can have access to the whole library. There's like 100 hours of resources on videos and there's almost 101 pages. So yeah, this is gonna be exciting. Bobby, is there anything that we want to talk about or share? I thought chat was particularly exciting this morning and I wanted to, even though we invite people at the end of the broadcast to come and join us on our weekly Twitter chats, I think I would love to hear you talk about the magic that was this morning when people from the UK and the United States and Ireland and other places came and joined in on our chat this morning that we have every week and just the collaboration of beautiful everything that went on this morning. I would just love to, for you to share with our audience what that was like this morning because I found it to be profoundly moving and I was just stoked for the entire day after chat today. You know, it is so amazing to push the button on my tweet um, <laughs> to see how, you know, you hear people talk about, oh, you know, online, you know, those relationships aren't real. You have to be in, in person with someone. But by golly, we have, our community has, we have not done this, our community has built significant relationships amongst each other. And it was so amazing this morning, you know, we started talking about music and how can music lift you up? How can music um, inspire you? How can music help you when you feel like you are completely and utterly alone in this world? How can music help you to be calm? And People were just sending in link after link after link to YouTube videos and web pages and playlists of songs that they love. And I said in Twitter at the chat, and I, we need to do this, I'm just not sure how, we need to put together a survivor playlist and put it out there for um, of songs and music and maybe segment it by, um, genre you know so if you're looking for something inspiring trays and we talked about everything from um dubstep to jazz to classical to you know <laughs> athena who said that she liked to listen to old michael jackson music hey and I'm like, Wait a minute. Okay, I feel the need to defend myself here. 
I was picturing myself as a fourth grader with a Michael Jackson poster on my wall back in the early, early 80s. And then I was picturing myself listening to like old Jackson 5's A, B, C, one, yes. two, three, baby, you and me. There, there, you guys were asking if we were going to sing tonight. That was the song. Like, oh, where's Tracy? I need you now. Okay, so yeah, we're not going to sing for you tonight, but we might have to have some karaoke. You did. Yeah, we're not going to sing anymore. Zip it. We're not going to sing anymore for you guys. But, um, but yeah, I didn't mean old Michael Jackson. Like Michael Jackson music is like super old for like all old people. Like. I'm a huge fan of the Michael Jackson. Like, he changed the world. He changed pop music. He changed dance. He changed so much. And so I'm a huge yeah. fan. But I meant old Michael Jackson. Not like I'm old. Like Jackson 5 Michael Jackson. Yeah. Like old, like, yeah, like way a long time ago, like 70s, you know. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. It's funny because I can remember I, Colin was talking about, well, we were talking about the Eagles. Yes, and the Another Beatles. Thing. I love the Beatles. Yes. I'm like, yeah, I had their albums and then their cassette tapes and then their CDs. <laughs> <laughs> and now everything's iTunes, right? Yeah. Or online. So I'm like, wow, I'm old. <laughs> but, um, it but just gives me a richer playlist to pick from. So that is, that is true. Old. We, we discuss everything from progressive house, like Bobby said, and dubstep to I love me some Louis Armstrong and some Etta James and any 30s music. I love swing music, big band music. I love music from the 50s. I was raised on Pink Floyd. Um, and I mean, oh gosh, Black Sabbath, um, anything 70s. Like I was raised, my parents were total hippie partiers. Like, like the types of parties that like I wouldn't want my kid to go to parties, like big drug parties, like with lots of crazy music, like ranging from who knows what. I mean, what is that song from Pink Floyd that's like 27 minutes long and it's all just psychedelic? Anyway, I can't remember the, the name wall? of it. Right now. Maybe it was The Wall. I can't remember the name of it. But, but I played all this music. You guys, I had 80 song playlists for my wedding, ranging everything from acoustic singer songwriter to the Doobie Brothers to Pink Floyd to Etta James to um, Patriotic God Bless the USA song by Lee Greenwood when my son like came in and um, walked in before us and Bruno Mars um, I mean you, Madonna you, you uh, well, Abba uh, like there was eclectic you guys just listening to everybody's musical tastes and who can forget all of the power ballads of the 80s bands all the 80s hair bands oh my gosh there was some beautiful amazing incredible music during that time even if you're not a rocker then it's it's easy to just really have an appreciation for for some of that music and guns and roses um i mean anyway just so much music just makes us happy now they're the we bobby i would love to hear you talk about the portion of our chat this morning when we sort of shifted to what songs or are there songs what songs are do we avoid because they bring back like certain memories or they're very triggering for us to listen to one of mine was Cindy Lauper because it was just during the like the very beginning stages of my abuse that I can remember yeah. um, but what about you there um, there was a portion this morning where we talked about some songs that we, we really couldn't listen to because it was just difficult for abuse reasons. Well, and you know, sometimes it's, it's not directly related to our abuse. Like there are songs that are difficult for me to hear because um, they were associated with after my abuse. So when I was in my early teens, which was a really, really amazingly, here I am not naming my time as when I was abused as a really hard time, but I was in that place of I don't belong to, in the world, um, but I don't know where I belong. And I would go to things like school dances and stand in the corner and feel like nobody in the world saw me Nobody wanted to dance with me, nobody. And so I have a whole bunch of songs like from that particular period that, you know, if they come on the radio, I'm punching in channels to change the channel. That is one of the best things about the fact that we can now listen to music on iTunes 
or Spotify or Pandora, you know, we get to skip those songs and we get to pick the ones that we like. Um, when I was a little girl, <clears throat> grew up pretty poor. And my sister and I, when we were young, had two record albums. One was Frank Sinatra. I don't know why we had that one. And the other one was um, the Mary Poppins soundtrack that my mom and dad had gotten for us at a yard sale. I don't know where Frank came from. And we used to, and then we had an old record player, old record player, practically hand crank, you know? And we used to listen to those for hours and hours and hours and hours. Um, I think that I was probably the only six-year-old who could sing Frank Sinatra songs from beginning to end. Um, and then, you know, we sang Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo and all the ones from Mary Poppins. And those are very fond memories for me of my sister and I having fun, you know, having a little bit of escape amidst everything else um, when we could sit safely in my bedroom and listen to music. So obviously it wasn't as nice. We did it during the daytime. Um, so yeah, music can make amazing connections. You know, and one of those reasons is that music, I know music has words, and so it sounds a little, um, what's the word I want? Inconsistent. Sorry. That's I okay. To. You gotta turn that down out. before we violate YouTube's terms of service. Oh crap. Sorry, YouTube, no more. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Sorry. That's, okay. that. That's our jam. We gotta play that as like we gotta we have to we have to find a reason for all of us survivors to get together so we can play that song. Go ahead, Bobby. Sorry, sorry. Rachel Platten. Yes. Is it? Yes. Rachel Platten. Okay. Mm -hmm. um. <laughs> but Yes, music has words. Expressive therapies are about reaching the parts of your brain and expressing emotions that are not stored in our language centers. Music has that incredible capacity of being a crossover method of expression, okay? So it can reach the parts, even though it has words, those words go to one part of our brain and the music goes to that other part of our brain where words are not stored, but memories are, emotions are. And so when we hear that song, it evokes that emotion, and then it also touches the music. And so that's one of the reasons I adore music, is because it will let us do both. And as trauma survivors, we have to remember that there is a large part of our trauma that is stored in non-language Based places in our body, not just our brain, but our body. You know, Athena and I have talked many times about how our body carries trauma. Um, and we end up with autoimmune disorders because of the cortisol that, that flowed through our body. And we end up with aches and pains and other issues because of the trauma that's stored in our body. And that is the magic of expressive therapies is that they let us tap into, express and heal, okay, heal, actually the parts, the trauma that's stored other than in our language center in our brain. And so that's music, that's art. I am a huge, huge, huge fan of art therapy. Um, and. If it's art therapy, we're not concerned about the end product. We're talking about the process, okay? So when I talk about art therapy, I get invariably people who get a look of panic on their face and say, I can't draw things. I can't make art, I can't paint. That's not what it's about. I don't care if the end product is something you're gonna run in and put through the shredder. What we're talking about is you accessing parts of your thoughts and feelings through art that you have not in other ways. So art is fantastic and art along with music 
combined, those two are fantastic. Um, and like Athena said, equine therapy, movement-based therapies are fantastic. Dance, um, yoga can be very healing and it can help hey, us to access thoughts and feelings too. Hey, yes. Hey, Bobby, I, I have, it's not necessarily a question that someone asked, but, but um, Dominique made a comment about something and I'm just curious how we can heal this if, if we can. So um, there's an opening song in Sleeping Beauty and her abuser's name rhymed with Aurora. And the abuser would force her to sing that song with her name in it. So and my response was, I wish there was some way that we could heal that. I wonder if we could pull that apart for just a second. Like, what would it look like to heal a musical memory? Like, you know how the power of scent is precognitive, and so if we smell something, it will trigger us before our brain even realizes we're triggered and it's so it's like a ninja trigger it's so hard to come down and ground right. ourselves from a smell but like what about a song what about a song like we hear a song and it's so triggering because of something like this that's so twisted and ridiculous and just awful right. and evil like to ruin that song for her forever and ever and ever because so much abuse happened so like that was her abuser so i wonder if there's a way for us to like I'm sure with EMDR or something like that could be healed, but can you think of a way that you could heal something like that since it's something that's so deeply ingrained like through music? I think that that requires a powerful experience to reclaim that song. So what she needs to do if she desires to have that song be a part of her life and not associated with those memories is to construct powerfully positive experience that involves that song. Um, I'm trying to think of something that she could do at this point, but in terms of you know making it a concrete example, um, and I, I can't think of anything specifically with that song, but say for example there was, um, you know, Rachel Platten's This Is My Fight song, it had a really negative connotation for someone. You know, something happened to them while that song was playing. If a large group of us were able to get together and sing it kind of as an anthem, I think that would be a powerful memory that might be able to overwrite the negative memory. And you, you know, you may need to have several really positive memories to overwrite that one because it is so deeply ingrained. Um, and I'm sorry that Sleeping Beauty was ruined. Yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just heartbreaking for me. Um, I wanted to say a very special welcome to Aniqua. It is her very first time tuning in live with us, and we are grateful that you are here with us. Welcome, 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 yes. welcome. Um, yeah, we're sorry, Dominique, that Sleeping Beauty was ruined for you. That is just so, uh, anyway. And Donald Cribs, by the way, is sharing a couple of tweets, you guys. There's a two, um, so far there are two tweets and there's gonna be more. Um, he's, he's numbering them, one, two, three, and however many more, um, about, it's called um, six, six, Step breathing or six, what's it called? Um, six facet, six faceted breathing or six, um, six directional breathing. And it's, but I think he may have learned it at that, um, the healing, survivor healing weekend that he went to. And he also talked about drama therapy um, being very, very healing, like acting out. Um, and Professor um, Vandal. I always say his name wrong. Uh huh. Van Van Kolk. Vander Kolk. Um, he leads um, healing weekends as well and does, like, where each person that is in the room, each safe person, plays a different character in your scenario. And then you, re you reenact the parts of your scenario so that you can actually have a voice. And yeah. it's very, 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 very powerful and very healing. I was reading all about it in like in research for this week's topic. That's the perfect example of overwriting a 
prior bad memory with a new, more powerful, empowering one. Yes, you Dominique. Rewrite Dominique. the story. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. And that's that's how we reclaim, you know. And there are there are so many parts of our life, of our bodies, of our our childhood, that are just obliterated by bad memories. And we have to, if we want to, we can reclaim them. We absolutely can. And, and rewrite a positive experience, a positive memory, a positive message on top of all that old ugly. It takes some practice, but like you said, it's very powerful. Yeah, I, I'm wishing, I'm, I'm hearing like a, a lot of people, like even Katie was chiming in that her abuser used to play the same rap song over and over and over and over again. And just like rewrite, like flip the script, guys, flip the script and, and find, finding a way to reclaim that piece of reality for our own and not something that was um, twisted and um, that we were twisted and contorted to perform a certain way and like have it be ruined for us. Um, in, in, in a, in a, uh, it, similarly, when I was training for a half marathon, the very first one that I was ever going to do, I was really learning to practice self-care for the very first time. It was just sort of the stage of my recovery that I was in where I was learning it for the first time. And I had like a system, like a morning routine that, and I would listen to this one particular John Mayer CD during that time. And I'm telling you, every single time to this day, if I hear one of those songs from that John Mayer CD, whatever frame of mind I'm in, I'm like, I can do this, I'm healthy, I can practice excellent self-care, I can be well, I can reclaim my life. Like I somehow like get inspired because of that song, because of whatever song comes right. on. And yes. it's just, you I think programmed it's, your mind. Yes, I'm trying to think. I think it was Continuum. I can't remember. I mean, it was a lot. Actually, it was a live. It was a live CD. So, um, but yeah, you guys, the power of music and art. And you know what? Really quickly, before I, we're going to be shifting into our one page here in a moment, right, Bobby? Are we? Yes. Or, um, yep. uh -huh. I wanted to show you guys something super quick. I'm telling Tracy to rewind because I sang for her. She just showed up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she does. She's you guys. Um, just say a really quick hello to Tracy if you could, and just say hi. She's been in the hospital and she had surgery on her. She had a broken femur. So send her some, um, just some safe, safe cuddles and and uh, and sweet hugs if you could. If you think about her, uh, she's at uh, Tracy underscore NNP. Um, our in-house neonatal nurse practitioner and conference planner extraordinaire. So super quick, you guys, um, please ignore the pile of laundry on the floor if you happen to see it. Um, but I wanted to show you something. It's, it's on topic for our um, expressive therapies. And I just wanted to show you super quick. You can create something like this for yourself. Like, okay, I have a drop cloth. Okay, there we go. I have a drop cloth on the floor. It costs like a couple dollars, or you can use an old sheet, and I have like a piece of canvas, like plasticky stuff underneath it, just in case I drop any paint. And I got these little like paper drawers for like a couple bucks on Amazon. I painted this old bookcase. I painted it white with like a spray can. Oh, that's a piece of art that my son made for me. Um, that is like my favorite, and like a piece of clay that he formed for me when he was really, really, really little. So here. Are just like some watercolors like just some cheapo stuff and then back in here are just like some of those paints you can buy on Amazon they're just acrylics and um, and then like here's some brushes like you can get a package of those brushes for like five bucks and there's like my water bowl like different colors and I was doing some watercolors but here I started like, sketching um, an angel that I, I wanted to start an angel anthology as a fundraiser um, for all of our peeps to send in uh, pictures of angels, we would we would sell it or something and like do a fundraiser. Anyway, we're we're getting ready to do like an art like a, an adult coloring book um, as a fundraiser as well, which I need to be meeting with Simeon. I haven't 
I haven't seen Simi. You guys, did we see Simi and Jack today? I missed them. Did anybody see them, or did I just miss them? Somehow? I haven't seen them. I didn't see them this morning. Huh? -uh. I need to. I need to touch base with her just to find out um, what time we're meeting. But um, you guys, so I'm not an artistic person. Okay, I'm not. I was afraid to even go do that art class. I took one art class. Actually, I went to one, one of the paint and sips where they serve you wine. And I did okay, but I messed up the leaves on my tree and anyway. But then I did one other art class and then the gal that was teaching the art class like drew on with pencil on my watercolor when I was done with it and like devastated me. I was just like so heartbroken that she drew on my art. I was so, I will never do that if I help teach an art class. So um, I was terrified and I was like, you know what? No, I'm not going to allow this to be robbed from me. I'm going to go online on Amazon and I'm going to find some cheap stuff. I got this like package of canvases and just some like cheap brushes and cheap paints. And I've been trying like once a month or so to just be expressive in some sort of an art form. Um, and I've been failing a little bit because I haven't done it once a month, really. I've only done it a few times, but um, but music is really, really healing. And you can get that, do that some sort of a little setup like that, or just set aside a little area if you possibly can, so that it's in front of you and it's ready for you to just sit down, like set yourself up for success, like we do in our crisis management plans and like all the other stuff we're teaching you guys as well. Like put that old crappy sheet down on the floor and like get some old chair or whatever and like you know buy some cheap brushes or some cheap paints and and maybe just allow yourself like even if it's just a half hour once a month to just create something um, and see how it goes because you might find that you access a part of you that you never even knew existed and sort of reclaim that piece of your life which could lead to reclaiming another piece of your life and another and another and another there's like exponential growth um, that can happen when you have like it could be a catalyst of change for you So Bobby your comments on all of that, you know as you're as you're talking about that I Think art is an excellent way to get unstuck when we feel stuck It's also an excellent way to bring forth emotions when we feel completely shut down and bottled up and one of my favorite things to do and someday I will do this with a big group of survivors Get yourself a huge, either a huge piece of paper or even a big piece of canvas and go out in the yard or someplace in your house where you can get, you know, put down a sheet or whatever where you can get messy and just, I don't care, finger paint, um, get a big brush, whatever you want, and just get into the color and just spread it around on the paper. Big, messy, art projects where no one's going to yell at you if you get messy. Nobody's going to yell at you if you get paint on your shirt. Um, no one is there to say, no, it doesn't look like a fruit bowl. It needs to look like that fruit bowl up there on the stand. Nope. All you're doing is just creating. Put some awesome music on and just let yourself go. And can you can do layers and layers of paint. You can write words in the paint. Get out a marker and write in the painting whatever you want to do. Um, the idea, again, it's about the process and not the product. Um, and big, messy art projects are fantastic for accessing emotions, particularly it's a good one for accessing anger. Um, and it's also a good one for accessing sadness, um, and power, you know, because you're you're in control of what's going on that piece of paper. Nobody else is but you. So um, I'm a huge fan of big messy art projects, and someday um, we will all do them. But for now, <laughs> get yourself a big piece of butcher paper um, and just go to town and just create and don't worry about what it ends up looking like. In fact, if it ends up looking like a big bunch of mud at the end, that's fine. Doesn't matter, roll it up, throw it away, whatever you want to do. Yeah, I think uh, when it's we, about getting when, in there and expressing yourself. Like when we commit to the when we commit to the process 
and not necessarily the outcome. I think if you can take away anything from um, today's broadcast, just possibly think about what it would look like to commit to the process of doing a piece of art just for the sake of doing it and not necessarily having that piece of art to keep forever. Because you don't have to create a piece of art that you're going to keep forever and frame it and put it above your fireplace or on your wall or anything. Just commit to the process and not the outcome. And perhaps that will give you some permission. Think of, think of children that go off, um, like at church on Sundays, a lot of uh, the kids, they will go off to Sunday school. And then at the end of Sunday school, they'll bring out like, feathers and popsicle sticks and q-tips with finger paints and cotton balls and weird stuff and they're like mommy look and she's like oh, it's beautiful <laughs> and I'm like I mean it's hard because I have those little moments where I'm like oh my goodness I never had that that sucks and I sort of have like a triggered moment but then when that part sort of subsides and I think of the beauty and the simplicity of this little child just getting some weird paste and stuff and just like spreading it all over the place and being like so proud of it. Like I really want to encourage us and push us beyond our limits a little bit to allow ourselves permission to embrace the process and not necessarily the outcome because that is what, that is a perfect metaphor for our recovery journey because when we embrace the process of recovering, and not necessarily, well, what am I gonna look like when I'm done recovering? I'm so sick of this. Am I done yet? Am I done yet? Am I done yet? I'm sick of triggers. I'm sick of recovering. I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm sick of it. We're all sick of it. I mean, we're all so damn sick of it. We're sick of anxiety. We're sick of PTSD. We're sick of triggers. We're sick of um, sleepless nights. We're sick of flashbacks, emotional flashbacks. We're sick of it all. But the more we persevere and commit to the process and not necessarily like, hurry it up already, come on, come on, come on already, like let's get to the outcome. We embrace the journey and embrace the process. When we do get to the outcome and even little steps and, and like resting points along the way, it's so much more beautiful and fulfilling. Bobby, your comments on that? Oh, you know, another thing that I like thinking about that, another thing that I like the art and the expressive therapies is because they are pleasant modalities. If if someone comes to me and says, okay, today we're going to talk about your trauma, and I get that inward cringe, you know, of no, I don't want to talk about it again. But if you come up to me and say, we're going to do some art therapy today, I'm like, cool, I'm in. These are some ways that we can heal our trauma in the experience that is generally pleasant. Um, yeah, we're, yeah, I'm 50 years old and I'm still sick of processing my trauma. But when you talk to me about music and equine therapy and art therapy, I'm like, cool, I, I can do that, that's enjoyable. The emotions that it brings up might not be my favorite thing in the whole wide world, but I like it. Um, I could do without some of the movement therapy because I still have body issues. But <laughs> I do too. Obviously, that means I need to do more movement therapy, right? <laughs> well, we mentioned in our one page today, we mentioned a couple of the other videos and one pages, and one of them is the discovering movement, and the other is triggers. Yes. And I could have mentioned several because there was so much mention um, this morning in chat. And just when you go to tackle the topic of any type of expressive therapy, we've touched around this topic in like 12 or 15 different ways on so many of our other one pages. And then for us to be focusing completely only on this topic, we it's just interesting how everything is so connected you guys everything in our recovery journey is connected it's just it, it it's a journey it's all part of this long winding road that we're on and part of that road is whether it's movement like part of the discovering movement video that that I did with Claudia Bobby was yes. like get, getting like a, a a kitchen towel and like slapping the ground no no and then like learning how to scream yes yes and um, using our voice and using just movement, like not exercise at all. It was just 
it was we were discovering different ways to move our bodies that were not considered exercise, but they were therapeutic in their nature. So um, anyway, hu just hugely beneficial, I thought. And um, that was one it's of the- It's empowering. Reasons. It's so, it was so empowering. It was so empowering, for sure. Um, Katie had asked, and I want to address this because other people might have the same question. Katie had asked if writing is an expressive therapy. And it's not because writing uses the language centers in our brain, but it's very powerful. And there is, excuse me, writing is actually called writing therapy. I mean, there are workshops about writing therapy. So I don't want anyone to think that because it's not an expressive therapy that it's not good. It is phenomenal. It's just not an expressive therapy. It's it's so wonderful that it's a therapy all on its own. <laughs> so Katie, keep writing. And it's cathartic. It's very cathartic. Yeah. And just, yeah. it, it can, especially when you're writing freely and you're not writing within. Again, constraints. the process, not yes. the product. Not the product. Like if you're writing within the confines of some sort of like rules, that can be a little bit more difficult. But if you're writing just to write and you're just enjoying the process of writing, it can, you guys, you, you can discover pieces of yourself that you never even knew you had, like discovering pieces of your mind that access different areas of your mind that know words that you didn't even realize you knew. Like whenever I go to write, I always tell Bobby this, and I've told you guys this before too. Writing for me is probably my biggest, it's my most triggering catalyst. Because when I'm speaking, whether it's speaking on a stage, speaking on an interview or a podcast like audio or speaking here on video with you guys every single week just showing up um there's i have certain ticks and tells and coping strategies that i use if i get triggered humor as a redirect for me is my go-to like i just can just show up as just the silly ridiculous girl that'll make you laugh and giggle and like start singing randomly or make weird faces. Um, and that is a way for me to almost distract myself if I'm triggered. Showing up on camera, first of all, for anyone, I don't care who you are, is, is terrifying. It's terrifying because you're putting yourself out there for the world to love or hate or ignore or complain about. We have trolls that show up every week. Um, we have critics. We have an inner critic, the loudest one. So showing up on video is, is terrifying in and of itself. And then for us to show up on a topic such as childhood sexual abuse and then show up as survivors who have, who have lived through sexual abuse and other forms of abuse, it's, it's 12 different levels of OMG, are they really doing this right now? And I was even told that at a conference that I, I presented at. They're like, how do you get up there and not only get up there and just talk and make it look like it's easy, but talk about such a sensitive topic? And I just had to be real and say, well, when I'm triggered or when I'm having anxiety and I'm scared out of my mind like I'm going to pee myself, Usually I use humor as a redirect because that's just a coping strategy that works for me. And I'm pretty good at showing up as the ridiculous girl and, and Bobby is the teacher and she's the therapist and she's very serious and very kind and compassionate. But a lot of that is me, you know, spoiler alert, a lot of that is me using, using humor as a redirect and a coping strategy. Now, am I usually fun and like funny and all that? Yeah, I'm not showing up here as someone false. I'm very, like, very vulnerable and transparent when I show up with you guys. But this is expressive for me, and this is community for me. This is healing for me to show up and bear my soul to you guys. And the reason it's therapeutic for me, while it's not considered an expressive therapy because I am showing up here using words, and like Bobby said, it's accessing the language areas of my brain, the benefit that I get from showing up here every single week with you guys 
is that a whole bunch of you, many of you here right now, will leave comments below this video and you'll just say hi and say, wow, I thought I was all alone. Or you'll email us and tell us a story about how you almost committed suicide and you decided not to because you found our YouTube channel. Or you'll send us a private message of a long, beautiful story of where you were three years ago and then you found us a couple years ago and here you are now and look at the growth in your life. Or you'll mail us, mail us gifts and, and, and with little handwritten cards and tell us what differences we're making in your life and how grateful you are to be a part of a huge family. You know, um, that's the benefit of us showing up here every single week and it's extremely therapeutic for Bobby and myself because you guys are what makes this community magical and amazing and powerful and you guys are the ones that are really changing the world. We show up and we provide the little link for you to click on but without all of you with your tweets and your comments and your emails and just your love and just shouting from the rooftops how awesome it is to be in safe community, Bobby and I would be stuck just doing like the other side jobs that we do part time to pay our bills and we wouldn't get to do this fun stuff with you. So, um, so thank you. Um, I didn't know I was going to get all emotional and like serious and sensitive and all that, but hey, this is live. So. Um, Bobby, did you have anything you wanted to add to that or your comments on, on my little soapbox rant about how special everyone is? I can't disagree with that. How can I disagree with the fact that you're all so special? <laughs> I, know, I didn't realize I was going to go there. Anyways, I started off just trying to tell you guys that it's okay to use certain things as coping strategies. and. But, but it really does just boil down to you guys just being amazing. And Mondays are our favorite day of the week because of you. So um, we are very excited to present to you an awesome one page, my favorite one page that we have ever done here in the, um, gosh, I don't even know what number this is. It's like number 90 something, almost, or maybe it's 100. I have no idea what number this is. But this is my most favorite one page that we have ever done. And you can access it for free over at traumarecoveryuniversity.com or nomoreshameproject.com. Click on the tab that says downloadables and you'll be given immediate access to this and our entire library, which we invite you to click print, put it into a, a binder and use it to, um, to heal on your recovery journey. And leave us a comment below if this video has been helpful for you or give it a thumbs up or share it with someone you know who needs to know that they're not alone. And uh, we're going to go ahead and share our one page um, content with you now. And we'll, we'll be talking a little bit more afterwards as well. OK. Let's talk one page. I have to get rid of this. Bing. There we go. OK. So this month, this whole month of May, we've been focusing on types of media, books, videotapes, podcasts that we can use to help ourselves further our recovery. Let's face it, not all of us have the money we need to fund all of the help that we need in our recovery. So having some ways to do things on our own is pretty darn awesome. So we talked about books the first week. We talked about videos and podcasts last week. And this week we're gonna talk about expressive therapies. So everything we've discussed up until this point relies upon language, but there are many things in our experiences that we don't have words to express. Sometimes our abuse memories and emotions are buried in places of our brains that don't have language abilities. And this is especially true if, you're, if you have abuse that occurred before you were verbal. So say between about the ages of birth and two, two and a half. And there was, and right there in parentheses, it says we have a video on one page titled Preverbal Memories. But even um, if you were abused past that preverbal stage, some of your memories can be stored in places where there's not a language base. And that's just because of the damage done to our brain and the way our brain um, the capacity to store memories got made icky wampus. There you go. There's a real professional word for you. Icky, icky wampus. wampus. Love yes. it. Let's put that in the glossary. Um, 
we can use expressive therapy methods to reach those. Expressive modalities typically don't require us to use language to benefit from their capacity to heal us. Examples of these are music, art, pet therapy, dance, equine therapy, and recreational therapy. Um, Phoenix was talking about how she goes to a class where she has kickboxing. That yeah. is recreational therapy. And that allows her to not only process um, memories and emotions that are stored in her body, but it's a great way to get out some anger. Um, all of these allow us to both express emotions and thoughts while receiving powerful and exponential healing benefits. Music is one of the most powerful expressive therapies, both listening to and creating music. We haven't talked yet tonight about creating music, but that can be very, very powerful as well. Um, not one of my personal skills. I can make noise, but not music. Okay, so here are some ways that we can use music. We can use music to calm ourselves and even promote sleep. I can't count on two hands the number of survivors I have worked with and I know that use music to help them fall asleep at night. Um, classical, soothing, calming music, maybe it's just nature sounds, um, ocean waves, um, whatever it is that is calming for you. And then I even know some survivors who wear earbuds to sleep. And if they wake up in the night and their earbuds have fallen out, they'll put them back in. So they'll keep listening to their music. Music can soothe us when we're anxious or upset. One of the things that we, that survivors rarely learn when they're young is how to self-soothe. And so developing tools on soothing, excuse me, as an adult is so important. We have to know how to soothe our upset and our distress without turning to um, unhealthy coping mechanisms. And I would just, if music is something that soothes you, put together a playlist and keep it on hand so that when you start to feel upset, you can play it. It is an excellent self-soothing tool. Music can also let us know that we're not alone in what we're feeling, because when you can find someone, um, gosh, who said this morning, someone said on the Twitter stream and they shared the song and they said, I think this song was written just for me. Oh, what song was that? I remember someone saying that. Yeah, I don't remember the song. I listened to it for a bit, but I don't know who, I wasn't familiar with the artist. But um, when we, I mean, when someone out there can nail our feelings in a song, you know, you're not alone. You are not alone. And I think that was one of the most powerful things this morning in chat and tonight on the broadcast is when someone said, hey, I love blank song and everyone goes oh yeah that's a great one okay you're not alone and music can unite us in that way music can also encourage and lift us up when we're feeling low or hopeless um that rachel platten song and this is my fight song i actually found a youtube video that repeats it for an hour i found one that repeats it for like 11 hours there's like an 11 hour repeat I know that's ridiculous, but it, it's really awesome. You know, sometimes I've never listened to it for 11 hours, but sometimes I like having it on repeat and I can just listen to it and sometimes sing along as terribly as I do and just it, it will encourage me and it will inspire me. And along that same lines, music can energize us and motivate us. Okay, Athena talked about listening to John Mayer and when she listens to that John Mayer album, which was associated for her marathon training, she knows she can make healthy choices. Um, oh, music helps us connect with others in social settings. Um, you have probably seen this if you have ever been to a concert, um, church, 
um, even a party or a function. Um, I, I can't even begin to imagine that we won't have some music at our conferences because it is an, a huge connector of people. And then last but absolutely not least is it gives us the opportunity to express and vent emotions. I have been known to, um, I don't drive just for driving, but if I'm driving somewhere and a song comes on the radio that I like, I make sure the windows are rolled up <laughs> and I turn the song on really, really loud and I will just sing at the top of my lungs. Um, you know, whether it's a, it's usually not a happy song, but maybe something that helps me get out a little bit of frustration and rage. So um, it allows us to express things in ways that are acceptable. Um, it's not hurting anybody. It's not aimed at anybody. It's not aimed at ourselves. So we're not harming ourselves. And so if music can help you do that, then, you know, I say go for it repeatedly. And then art. I'm going to move up the one page here. And we've been talking about this, but gosh, you guys, art is a very potent expressive therapy. And it allows us to tap into parts of our brain that language cannot. Um, with art, and it doesn't matter what form of art it is, okay? Painting, collage, clay, sculpture, jewelry making, photography, mixed media, um, mosaics, and making, you know, even down to things like making a, um, a mandala with sand. You know, like you, I have, I've never done it, but I have seen some done and they're just gorgeous. Any way that is an artistic form that can be created without rigid boundaries and standards. Again, it's not the process, not the product. For it to be therapeutic, the art making process is more powerful than the end product. To use art in our healing journey, experiment with different kinds of art. Okay, so if you have always been um, one to use pen and ink, try paint. If you have been always one to, you know, be a drawer, whether it's through paint, ink, pen, whatever, try working with clay. Um, do sculpture, try photography. Photography is such an easy way to capture images and, and express things these days because most of us all have cameras on our cell phones, right? Um, mixed media can be awesome. Just try different things because I think that different forms of art can access different parts of our brain. And so I encourage you to push the edges of your comfort zone. Don't set limits or standards on the end product. Just create without boundaries. Explore the use of color. Um, color is, is one of the neatest parts of art. Some colors convey a mood or emotion better than others. <laughs> I can remember, obviously, this, this pinged me because I still remember it so many years later. I was in one, I was in a psychiatric ward and we were doing art and um, we were supposed to draw a painting. And I drew a tree and it had a lot of red in it. And um, the art therapist said, well, you must be very angry. <laughs> and I remember looking at it going, I don't think I'm angry. Maybe I'm angry, I don't think I'm angry. But I, that one, that sticks in my mind because I can remember how she said that. And we've talked about this, but I'm going to say it again, get messy. Just get messy. Make art that is big and messy and involves your whole body. Accessing thoughts and feelings stored away in places we've never accessed before. Um, make art in groups of safe people. Group interaction while creating can be both supportive and healing. It's kind of the same component of um, working one-to-one -one with a the therapist is good, but sometimes group therapy is good too. Okay, so making 
are one-to-one, -one, you know, just yourself in your home in a safe place is good. But sometimes making art in groups is pretty amazing. And this last piece is just my, my caution because I know that for some survivors, different kinds of textures and odors can be triggering. Um, I have a texture trigger and it's anything that's really um, sticky that I can't get off my hands easily. If you could see me right now, I'm literally wringing my hands as I'm talking about this because I cannot stand that texture. It is just a sticky, gooey, icky, blah. Um, so for me, things like Play-Doh are not, will send me to the ceiling rather than being helpful to me. But types of clay like, um, uh, what's it called, Sculpey, Sculpty? Yeah. Other types of clay that aren't sticky like that, I'm fine. So be aware of what your personal triggers might be and honor those. Don't force yourself to work in an art modality that's triggering for you. Um, there's no benefit to that whatsoever. And um, then we have a video and a one page titled Triggers. Um, and the last, we just touch on the last two down here. Activities that involve movement can be very helpful in accessing trauma stored in our bodies, as well as helping us become more comfortable with and attached to our bodies. And we have the video on one page titled Discovering Movement. And then pet and equine, 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 where'd that come from? Equine therapy are fantastic ways to engage with another living creature who offers us trust, compassion, and unconditional love. Sometimes when you're first starting to heal, it is so hard to trust another human being. It is so hard to engage positively with another human being. In that place, pet therapy is magic because you can put your trust in this animal that has absolutely nothing to offer you other than adoration and love. So um, it's, it's wonderful and it can allow you to feel safe and grounded and allow you to practice the art of trust in ways that um, you might not be able to do with a human being in that moment. So there we go. That's the one page. And I'm gonna come back here and press stop. Presenting. There we go, yay, we're back. <laughs> um. <laughs> Um, YouTube's been uh, kind of glitchy tonight, you guys. So, um, oh, Lindy's talking about there are a lot of great adult coloring books out there. We're putting together an adult coloring book, Lindy, and we're gonna we're actually gathering submissions from people. We're gonna use it as a fundraiser so that we can get all the survivors together and have a conference. So, yes, adult coloring books can be extremely healing. And um, for anyone that was trying to watch live tonight and you're only able to watch the replay due to some, um, some glitchy issues with, um, with YouTube, we're sorry about that. We have uh, researched and sort of exhausted ourselves in looking for um, other outlets or something comparable to the Google Hangouts on air, which renders directly to our YouTube channel, which then goes to our Roku TV channel. And we haven't found anything that's comparable, um, that's affordable. We could be using Zoom, or um, I think there's one called Spreecast, or there's another one called 21 Social, but they're all very, very expensive. And of course it's technology, so they're gonna be glitchy as well. So um, before we transition our broadcast to the to the portion where we welcome new people in that perhaps have never been here before and it's their first time. I just wanna throw this out there to each and every one of you. Um, we've had some volunteers step up recently in areas that we really needed volunteers. We have never done sort of a, 
hey, if you would like to volunteer in our community, please let me know. Like we've we've sort of like mentioned it a couple times in passing, but we never really did a focused sort of reach out. Um, and these people somehow found us, and they they're just raised up into leadership positions in volunteering with our community because we we really needed it. So what what I'm saying is, for any of you that are looking to volunteer in, in some way, shape, or form, you might, I just want to plant this seed, you might have the specific gifting or the specific talent that, that we need in our community. And there's a chance that that unless you reach out and say, hey, I would love to be a part of whatever it is that you're working on and doing, how, how can I volunteer? Um, unless you sort of step up and say that you're interested in volunteering, we're never going to tap on you and say, hey, hi, so-and-so, I know you're a single mom and you work four jobs and you don't even have time to breathe, but you want to volunteer with us? <laughs> like, we're never going to um, reach out and ask you unless you message us or email us saying, uh, for instance, we have a research intern and she's amazing. And she emailed us and said, I'm looking for an intern position. I'm not looking for a paid position. I'm looking to be an intern. I'm transitioning. This is the portion of my life where I just am wanting to gain some life skills and I want to be able to, to volunteer as an intern. And um, we interviewed her and, and she fits a very specific skill set that we were looking for and we brought her on. And we're getting all of our professional emails set up in the week, this coming week. And we're just, we're really excited to be moving full steam ahead with this initiative of reaching 1 billion survivors globally. So we're 70 countries in and we're going to keep on going and we're not going to stop. So if you are looking for a way to volunteer your time, um, even if it's just one hour a week or one hour a month or whatever, um, something that's totally on your spare time, then please reach out to us at no more shame project at gmail.com and let us know if you're interested in being an intern um, because we could interview you and see what it is that you love and if it fits the construct of, of what it is that we're looking for or, and we would love to have you. So um, safe people only, predators not welcome, <laughs> obviously. Um, Bobby, did you want to add anything to that before we transition our broadcast, or did you want to say anything to everybody before we go, all of our normal peeps that are always here? I, I agree with Athena. You know, we do so much ourselves, but unless we have other people that are going to come on board, we won't be able to get to the numbers that we want to get. So um, we really appreciate the people who have come on board and shared some tremendous gifts and talents with us. And um, if you have gifts and talents and time, please, you know, do reach out to us and let us know so we can see if there's something that you have, a giftedness you have that meshes with something that we need. Um, we would we would really appreciate that. And thank you to everyone who's here. Hopefully, we'll have someone um, who can go back through the different Twitter chats that we do this week. Tomorrow night's the last one. Um, and gather all the songs together and help us make a list so that I, um, we can play them. Matt offered to take the genre of 80s rock music. <laughs> Because that's his favorite. So if you have a certain genre of music you want to like volunteer your time to help create a survivor's playlist, then by all means, please let us know. <laughs> we're creating a we're creating an ebook um, for survivors with all kinds of different um, multimedia reading, music, um, book like books, ebooks, videos, podcasts, every all types of multimedia for for survivors. So. Um, I just want to say a very, very heartfelt thank you to each and every one of you that decided to show up live tonight. It's always a joy to see you um, here on the Twitter feed, just supporting one another. 
the support that you guys give one another on a weekly basis is is nothing short of beautiful and miraculous in in our eyes. Um, we could have never dreamed that deciding to start a YouTube channel, we would be able to interact with you, watch you supporting one another, and watch the growth that you've experienced on your healing journey throughout the time that we've been together just over the last couple of years. So um, thank you for allowing us to be a part of your lives and for spending this last hour or so with us. We're going to transition and welcome all of the new people in and let them know how they can get plugged into Safe Community and how it is that they can contact us um, aside from leaving a comment below this video, uh, we want to make sure that everybody has our Facebook information, Twitter, and um, and our email addresses. So um, thank you so much for being here. And if you are brand new and want to stick around, we invite you to stick around with us. We have some awesome screen shares. It'll probably be just about 10 to 15, 10 to 15 minutes maximum. So, um, but thanks everybody for, for being here with us. It, Monday's our favorite day of the week because of you. So. Um, I think Bobby has a couple screen shares that she's going I do. On. I do, I do. Let's see which one to put up first. Which one should I put up first? Uh, hmm. This one. Did I, did I rush you? <laughs> I'm sorry. Did no, I rush you? You did not. You okay. did not rush me. Okay. <laughs> okay. I just, um, I am multitasking. Yeah. And sometimes the multitasking brain has limits. Okay, so we have Safe Community on both Twitter and Facebook, which you are more than welcome to join us on. These are free, they always will be free, never will be um, any charge for these. On Twitter, we have three Twitter chats a week. You can join us at one or all three or two, whatever it is that meets your needs. Um, Monday at 10 a.m. Pacific time, 6 p.m. in the UK, the hashtag is CSAQT, and that stands for Child Sexual Abuse Question Time. And then Monday evening, which is the live Twitter and video broadcast, which you're watching right now, either as a replay or live, the hashtag for that is no more shame and it is at 6 p.m. Pacific 9 Eastern and Tuesday at 2 o'clock in the morning and then Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. Pacific 9 o'clock Eastern see the pattern there um, <laughs> Wednesday at 2 o'clock in the morning is the final Twitter chat of the week and that is sex abuse chat um, hashtag sex abuse chat and then um, we have multiple Facebook support groups and we will be starting more because they are growing exponentially. If you would like to join one of our secret Facebook groups, um, they're entirely private. Even if you go to Facebook and you search for them, they will not pop up. We ask that you follow this four step process. And the first thing we ask you to do is to like the Trauma Recovery University page. And we'll show that URL to you on the next um, screen share. And then send friend requests to both Athena and I. Because, and we ask you to send them to both of us because we're both in two different time zones. We have two different schedules. So one of us is going to be able to get to you sooner than the other. So send us friend requests and then after we have accepted your friend request, not before, because if you do it before, it goes into that horrible other folder that we get no notifications there's anything in. I hate the other folder. <laughs> other folder is our nemesis. <laughs> I feel terrible when I see everybody in there. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's been in there since November of 2014. Yes. So um, after we accept your friend request, send us a message saying something like, I'd like to heal in safe community. I'd like to join one of your support groups. And then if we do not already know you from a live event or from Facebook or from Twitter chats or from this broadcast, we will ask you some questions. And that is because we're trying to create, and we have created safe spaces for survivors. And we want to make sure that no one gets into those safe spaces that are predatory, that will threaten that safety. 
So if we ask you questions, please don't be offended. It isn't because you appear to be shifty or we think you're a liar. It's because we're trying to protect the safety of the group. And when you are admitted into the group and you can partake of that safety, we will continue to do that with people who come after you so you can have that safe space to enjoy. Um, and so after we've questioned you, after we've gotten the information we need, we will get you plugged in to one of our support groups. And so let's see here, stop on that one. Now I'm gonna share the ways and you, up comes the pop-up. Um, Laura, yes. Rar, uh -huh. it's Laura, has volunteered to go back and co um, collate and collect all of Yay. the music, movies, and books, and all of that. So I'm going to connect her with Maggie because Maggie has that media list that she's already like been working on. Um, but how amazing is this going to be? I mean, we are yes. going to have all of this, all of these resources to give someone. Oh my gosh. I think that's wonderful. Now, see, and this is why we're doing this, because you and I didn't have this. Um, and we want others to have this. Okay, so here we go. Ways to contact us. I'm gonna make this big. Okay, if you would like to connect with us on email, you can write us at bobbylparish at gmail.com. Athena Moberg speaking at gmail.com and then no more shame project at gmail.com. If you would like to connect with us on Twitter, I am Bobby L. Parrish. Athena is Athena Moberg and Trauma Recovery University is Trauma Recovery U. Capitals don't matter. Uh, jump over to the right and you can see that we talk about places where you can see the replays of the videos. And all you have to do is go to YouTube, Roku TV or Google Plus and do a search for Trauma Recovery University. Anytime, you can come and watch our videos. Down here on the right-hand side, you'll see this. So we have a shortcut link that is bit.ly forward slash Trauma Recovery U, and the capitals on that one do matter. Um, if you would like to connect with us on Facebook, the Facebook page for Trauma Recovery University is facebook.com Trauma Recovery University. Bobby Parrish Coaching and Consulting is my professional page. Bobby Parrish is my personal page. Athena Moberg Speaking is her um, professional page. And Dawn Athena Moberg is her personal page. And those are the ways that you can connect with us. Yay! Yay! I'm just saying goodnight to everybody. Everybody's saying goodnight. So, um, Tracy. Um, was just saying bye to us as well. She said that um, we are awesome peeps and we make her heart and her hip feel better. Tracy just had surgery on a broken femur. Holy moly. Huh. Um, and she is our conference planner extraordinaire. Working yes, extraordinaire behind the is scenes. the word. Oh my gosh. I mean, and we and other volunteers, we have Matt, we have Maggie. Um, I'm getting ready to meet with Simi, who's going to be gathering some um, uh, some entries for the adult coloring book. Um, we have we we're just we're so blessed. We have a whole bunch of volunteers that are helping doing our moderating, and we haven't like ramped them up and onboarded them fully. Um, they're helping with our Facebook groups and our YouTube comments and emails. Are going to be helping us out in so many other capacities because Bobby and I are just two humans. Two, one, two humans. We are two humans, and there are one billion survivors. So um, that leaves half a billion for Bobby and half a billion for me, and that's impossible. So we need you, lovely, amazing survivors, to come help us reach a billion people with a message of hope and healing. So um, there's your call to action. Not only should you give this video a thumbs up <laughs> if it helped you, um, but subscribe to our channel and let us know in an email over at nomoreshameproject at gmail.com or over in the about section of our YouTube channel. Uh, let us know how you would love to help us 
reach 1 billion survivors globally. So um, it is an honor to be here with you every single week. Thank you for showing up. You are the reason this community is incredible and magical and um, life-changing. And um, just, Bobby, did you want to say anything? I, I I'm just I'm getting a kick out of um, Laura volunteering to do the music. <laughs> and I told her that um, Edna would be the official playlist mascot. Oh, yes. Most definitely, because Edna's adorable. <laughs> With, just in our survivor community alone, we have some amazing pet therapy. And her horse is beautiful, too. Oh, my goodness. Yes, yes, so, yes. And then, of course, Mia. Mia's a beautiful kitty. So, and Oh, and there's a turtle, too. And why am I forgetting Flash? Flash is Matt's turtle's name. So, um, but, And I had a turtle named Speedy and a dog named Deuce. So, and, and Bobby has copper yep. and silver. Yep. <laughs> um, Can you see the theme? <laughs> right? <laughs> um, but you guys, thank you. Bobby and I are so honored to be here with you every single week. And um, we just, we look forward to this. We really do. I know we say it so often, but, um, but thank you. Thank you for being here with us every single week. And we will see you next Monday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, live right here, exactly where you're at right now. Or um, you can watch a replay 24-7, 365, or reach out to us. Go over to the About section of our YouTube channel and find out how to get plugged into Safe Community if you missed that portion of the video for some reason. Um, but this is Bobby Parrish, and I am Athena Milberg, and we love bringing you everything you need for healthy, informed trauma recovery, and we will see you very, very soon. Bye, everybody.